America's roads are considered among the best in the world. But keeping them that way often seems a losing cause. The skills are there, but too often the budgets are not. Especially at the municipal level, maintenance funds are simply inadequate. This puts a burden on managers to get maximum value for every dollar spent. As consumers, many transportation professionals may be skilled at that already. Take Dan McElroy. He's a professional engineer who heads up a municipal transportation office. When it comes to consumer buying for themselves, he and his wife are value conscious. They plan carefully. They know prices. They check things out and ask questions. Their shopping has a purpose. They know exactly what function each purchase must fulfill. This value approach saves them money. It stretches their budget. It buys extras. Dan's department could use such extras. But long years of accepting project estimates at face value have made him unaccustomed to looking for lower cost alternatives. He's about to discover there's a systematic way to do that. It could increase the value of his department's budget by 10 to 20 percent or more a year without the benefit of an additional dime in appropriations. Dan McElroy is about to discover value engineering. It's exciting. It's almost like a game. Yet it's an analytical technique modeled on plain common sense. To Dan's department, value engineering can mean savings of forty to fifty thousand dollars every year. Nationwide, that can add up to more than two billion dollars every year. Those savings are a gift of value. They go back into this country's streets and roads to buy improvements that present budgets will not allow. Value engineering is not new. It goes back at least to World War II, when the armed forces and its largest suppliers, faced with frequent shortages, worked out a systematic method for finding alternatives. Later, private corporations like GE and large government agencies perfected the technique so it could be used to save money as well. So, value engineering is proven. It works. It's creative. It gets people involved. There's something satisfying in being able to work together on the common cause of saving money. Of course, there are barriers and obstacles. When it comes to budgets, people can get involved on a very personal level. Old habits and long-established attitudes can act as bottlenecks. These must be dealt with if value engineering is to fulfill its promise. The technique itself is a six-step procedure. At its core is the ability to define functions. This is crucial. High costs often result because the functions to be performed are not precisely stated. From the start, in other words, the problem must be clear. A manager or supervisor usually knows where costs might be running high. Every office, regardless of size, has projects that are over budget, large, or complex. Once a problem is selected, the manager appoints a value engineering team. Although a VE analysis may be completed by one person, a team brings perspectives that a single individual usually can't supply. To begin, the group must investigate exactly what functions are to be performed and determine where the best opportunities lie to maximize value. Then it's time to speculate. Make a list of all conceivable alternatives for performing the desired function. Be creative. Brainstorm. Use your imagination. Put down everything. Then, evaluate. Sift and discard until only the most workable ideas are left. Each of these must be carefully developed. 
This means checking out all conceivable obstacles as thoroughly as possible. Finally, present your recommendations to the proper authorities. If you've done a good job, this should be the outcome. Few municipal governments will resist changes that save money without sacrificing quality or reducing services. It's a great feeling for all concerned. These then are the six steps of value engineering. Select a problem, investigate the functions involved, speculate, evaluate, develop, and make a presentation. A value engineering analysis actually completed in Virginia makes a good case in point. A community there had a problem with its Main Street Bridge, built 30 years ago. The deteriorated deck had to be repaired. The total job had been estimated in six figures. A value engineering team was formed. It began by investigating the functions involved defining terms, listing major items of cost, and determining value opportunities. Two functions emerged as likely candidates for savings. To find lower cost alternatives, the team began to speculate. They made a long list of possibilities, some of which were far-fetched. No matter. Sometimes a wild idea will spark a workable idea. Next, the surviving alternatives were evaluated. Two were rejected and two remained for development. The team made a detailed workup of costs and a careful analysis of possible obstacles. The final figure showed a potential savings on this single project of almost $60,000. This represented a savings of 42% on the project. The savings stayed at home and were used to buy extras for the care of local roads or streets. That's value engineering, a step-by-step, -step, systematic way to find lower cost alternatives. It's creative, it's exciting, it's function-oriented. It's a way to make transportation budgets buy more. In fact, all municipal departments stand to benefit from the savings that value engineering makes possible. But on roads and streets alone, the potential for savings is enormous. Nationwide, it could amount to more than $2 billion a year. So give yourself and your community the gift of value. Value engineering, a proven technique for saving money. It will help you stretch your transportation budget and keep America's roads among the best in the world. Woo! <laughs>